any further, can you simplify this side like we did over there? Yeah. In fact, we already had the square root of 18 today. That's 3 root 2. So we get x plus 2 equals plus or minus 3 root 2. By a show of hands, how many feel okay getting that far? Good deal. How about this row? You guys feel okay with that? Are we done? No. Why? Subtract 2 you have to isolate x. Oh, I'll get x myself. Now, the, the problem is, if I do subtract 2, where do I subtract 2 from? Can I do it from here? No, from the left. This has a root, this one doesn't. So I can't just subtract 2 from 3. That doesn't happen. Because this is 3 root 2, right? I would need a like root, a like radical to do that. I don't have one. I have a whole number. I'm sorry, an integer. I've got something attached to a root. So the way you do this problem, you go, okay, over here I do have my x, no problem. But since I can't subtract this from anywhere, what I'm going to do is put it at the front of my problem. Negative 2. But I still have a plus minus 3 root 2. Are you okay with that one? Are you sure? So that this 2, you can't subtract it from anywhere. It's got to go in front of your, your expression here. We have negative 2, negative 2, plus or minus, plus or minus, 3 root 2. You with me? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I had to write out both solutions here explicitly was so that you not be confused over here. What this says is you have negative 2 plus 3 root 2 and negative 2 minus 3 root 2. Do you still have two solutions? Mm -hmm. Write out both solutions. So, negative 2. Look, at, look how it goes. It's like, a, it's like a stream in two directions. You have negative 2, the upstream, and the downstream. So we have plus 3 root 2, negative 2 plus 3 root 2. We have negative 2 minus 3 root 2. You have to give me both options here, the plus and the minus. Notice how this negative 2, look at the board here real quick. This negative doesn't change, does it? That's set in stone. It's this one that changes, the plus minus. You have to give me both the plus and The, the integer will go in the front. Yeah, the roots are going to go in the back end. Let's try one on your own, and then we'll continue. Okay, so back up at our problem here. Do we have something squared equals to a number? Yes, yes no? Yes. All right, that's great. That's what we want, right? We want something squared equals to a number. If we have something squared equals to a number, I know that I can take a square root of both sides of that equation as long as I still have a plus and minus. I know how many people got exactly that, including the plus and minus. Good, that plus and minus, again, that's one of the biggest things we're, we're learning in this section. Of course, the x square or the square and the square root, those are going to be gone. They eliminate their inverse operations. We have x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 20. We've already seen the square root of 20 already today. If that's 4 times 5, that's going to be 2 root 5. So we get x plus 3 equals plus or minus 2 root 5. Did you make it that far? Now, we're not quite done. We need to get x by itself. The way we do that is we subtract or add whatever constant term we have. Here we're going to be subtracting 3 from both sides. Now, where this one doesn't have a radical like this does, it says I can't subtract that from the 2. There's nothing I can do to put those things together. So this is going to go in the front of our expression. We get x equals negative 3. 
then we still have to have a plus or minus. So I want to be real sure that you didn't put the plus or minus here. You put it in front of that expression, in front of the 2 root 5, because you're going to be adding and subtracting that to this negative 3. The last thing we got to do is write out both of our solutions, which we have two of. We do negative 3 plus 2 root 5 and negative 3 minus 2 root 5. Would you raise your hand if you made it all the way down to that? That's great. That's fantastic. You're there. You now have the idea down for this section. This is it. This is as far, well, not as far, but this is really the whole idea of this, this whole section. What you can do with these squares. Now, what's amazing is that this right here, that's a number, right? There's no variable there. That's a number. If you take negative 3 plus 2 times square root of 5 in your calculator, it's going to give you some decimal that doesn't add. If you took that and you plugged it in here, so basically if you added 3 to it, and then squared it, you know what? It's going to give you 20. In fact, you could probably see that right here if you really think about it. Take this expression. Follow me along here. Take this expression, plug it in. Add 3 to it. What's it going to do? It's going to get rid of that 3. You're going to have 2 root 5 squared. 2 root 5 squared, that would be 4. Square root squared is eliminating the square root. You get 4 times 5. What's 4 times 5? 20. It works. It's going to work here too because that negative when you square it becomes a positive. Interesting stuff here, right? That this is a solution. Weird. Now let's check out the next one. Next one. Do I have something squared equals to a number? Yep. That's what I need for this stuff to work. That's why we had to isolate a square, uh, x squared over over here and over here. That's so why we had to isolate those things. Right here, I have isolated so we can take a square root of both sides. Of course, we need a plus or minus. We go, oh, get yeah, nice. We're going to get 3x minus 1. That square and the square root are going to be gone. Right hand, oh, wait a second. Can I take the square root of a negative number? Yeah. Uh, no solution, right? No solution. Get out of it. Have you just dealt with square roots and negatives? Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget about i. If you, if you forget about i, you can't see the problem correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that was bad. Oh my goodness. All right. So yeah, you, you take a square root of both sides, just like you would before. However, there's never, ever going to be no solution for you. Ever. Because you can now take the square root of a negative number. You with me? You're never going to be like, yay, no solution. No, it doesn't happen anymore. All right? Section 10.7 was great because it was not, not really that hard. It was also kind of great because now you can deal with every problem you, you see. So where we're going to get 3x minus 1, that's not an issue. On the right-hand side, you're still going to have a plus or minus. You cannot forget about that. What's the square root of negative 4, please? 2i. Negative gives you i. Square root of 4 is 2. 2i. You okay with the 2i? Hopefully, because you just hopefully did all your homework. Otherwise, all your homework is probably going to be wrong. Uh, are you done? No. Not quite. You got, you got to solve for x. Tell me over here on this side, what's the first thing you're going to do to solve for x? Does this 1 get added to that too? No. So I have 3x equals 1 plus or minus, don't forget about the plus or minus, 2i. 1 plus or minus 2i. So far so good? Yep. Are you done now? No, no. This row, tell me something. What do you do? Divide by 3. If I divide by 3, that means I divide the whole thing by 3. True? Yes. X equals 1 plus or minus 2i over 3. Now that might look a little nasty to you, but I want you to really think about it. Look at what happens. In fact, don't, don't do this on your paper. But... Have you seen something like that before? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember dealing with those complex numbers in 10.7? What you did with this particular problem? Instead of 1 plus 2i over 3, you're going to write 1 third plus 2 third i. You with me? Yeah. I showed you that. Now, we don't just have one of those. We've got two of them. You're going to have 1 third plus 2 thirds i. You're going to have 1 third minus 2 thirds i. 1 third plus 2 thirds i. I'm doing two things here. Not only am I splitting up my fraction, 1 third, 2 third, I'm also going to be splitting up my plus minus. 1 third plus 2 thirds i. 
one third minus two thirds i. So two things, two solutions, and we split it up into complex numbers. Do you have complex numbers now? Yeah, I think yeah. You got real part, one third, one third, imaginary part, positive two thirds i, negative two thirds i. I'm gonna feel okay with what we just done. Good. Now I'm gonna try. Once you try one on your own, so don't forget about the i here. Did you solve it? Pretty quick, isn't it? Not too bad when you really get the hang of this stuff. So when you not these ones, you're not solving these yet, we're solving that one. Solving that one. Uh, first step, true or false? First step is to take the square root of both sides. Did you see that? What are you going to do first? Minus 2. Subtract 2. Why? Because we know, just like before, you need to isolate something squared. So even though we didn't do an example like this, hopefully you saw through that. So I can't just take a square root because this right here fails. That right there allows me to do nothing with the problem if I take a square root of both sides. So instead, we go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to isolate that square. I want to get 5x minus 2 squared equals negative 9. Do you get negative 9? Mm -hmm. That looks a lot better than me. That right there says, OK, I've got something squared. Let's take a square root of both sides. And we're not going to neglect the plus minus because that gives us our two solutions that we know we're going to have, even though they're going to be complex numbers here. On the left-hand side, we get 5x minus 2. On the right-hand side, you get plus or minus 3i. Did you make it that far, folks? Yes. Good deal. Now, we're not quite done. We just have some basic algebra to do. We're going to add 2. Now, while it can't be added to the 3i, we're going to have 5x equals 2 plus or minus 3i. We'll just put it in the front of that expression. It is a square root after all, just like before, it's a square root of negative 1. So we're going to put the number in front of it. We just now have a plus or minus. If we divide by 5 to get x by itself, we have a situation on this side where 2 plus or minus 3i all divided by 5. It does give, a, give us our two solutions because of the plus or minus. But we also want to write it like we write any other complex number, which is the real part plus or minus imaginary part. That's our 2 fifths plus 3 fifths i. That's the first one. 2 fifths plus 3 fifths i. And 2 fifths minus 3 fifths i. Notice how the number in front does not change its sign ever. It's just